Hey guys, this is Drew with Akusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be sharing two interesting coin stories with you guys this week. We hope you guys enjoy them. Uh, let's get this video started. So this right here is an 1884 Morgan Dollar graded MS65 by PCGS. And what you can tell from this holder already is that it is a doily. Um, so the backstory on this coin is that we got this coin at US Coin and Jewelry yesterday. Um, we were waiting for someone to come out to work on prices with us, Kenny Jr. And we were selling some old inventory, some stuff you guys passed on. Um, so just freeing up a little bit of capital. So I was just walking around the shop trying to look at some stuff. He has a lot of nice coins there if you guys ever stop by. Um, I'll leave some, leave some information down below if you guys are ever interested in going to U.S. Coin and Jewelry. Um, but this coin was just sitting with a bunch of other Morgan Dollars in a case. Um, they, were, they had like a generic price on each one. It was like 85 for MS63 Morgans, 125 for MS64 Morgans, and 210 uh, for MS65 Morgans. So uh, what had happened was I went over there and this doily was sitting right on top. And uh, I asked one of the guys that were at the counter, I said, hey, can I take a look at it? And then I confirmed price. He's like, yeah, 210 bucks. So before I even sold coins to Kenny Jr., I ended up just picking that coin up. And that's what you kind of want to do in any coin shop. Before I ended up talking to Kenny Jr., I ended up just looking around for some nice coins. And I stumbled upon this one, like I was saying. Uh, I just went to the counter and paid for it up front. Um, and then on the way home, or around on the way home, I think by lunchtime, we sold this coin for $525. So that was a good kind of bonus of just going to a coin shop, selling some stuff. Um, and that was kind of one of our big wins this week. Um, well, let me share another one with you guys in just a moment. And I guess the overall kind of message with this doily is that uh, don't think everybody knows everything. Um, you know, there's people that have been working in, in you know, coins for a long time, or they're just putting inventory out. Um, Kenny and them are very knowledgeable, very good guys, um, and they just put this one out because it's either they just didn't know about it or it was just something that you know was in the safe they wanted to leave out there. It ended up helping us out a little bit, but like I said, whoever is willing to know the most um, and and kind of be able to search the most for certain coins, you'll end up getting good deals. Um, a lot of stuff goes in and out of Kenny's shop just because they they pay really well and they have a lot of great connections. But sometimes you can just get lucky finding a coin like this, not only at a coin shop, but at a coin show on eBay or anywhere else. So keep the faith, keep looking. Uh, you'll find great deals like this and then be able to turn them for a profit or keep them for your collection. So, our second story of the day that we want to talk to you guys about is that when we were at the shirt show this weekend, I was getting there about 30 minutes before they let the general public in, so I had to pay an early bird fee. And there's a kid that sells numismatics on Instagram. His name is Isaiah Numismatics, also known as Jesse. You can follow him, I'll put his information down below. Um, but he came in at the same time as me. You know, we met for the first time, it was pretty cool, and then I went to the right, and he went to the left, and most coin shows are kind of split down the middle. Um, so he was walking the left side, I was walking the right side, he found a few things on my side, uh, but he found definitely the best coin of the day. Um, he ended up going down to, think, I think, Jackie's table, he's a dealer, um, and basically what happened was, was he was, you know, there's coins stacked on top of each other, and Jesse was just looking for a cheap OGH, uh, you know, PCGS holder. And uh, he ended up pulling out this nice 1927S Mercury Dime, graded MS64. It was an OGH slab. I'm going to post a picture of that right now. Um, I don't have it in hand yet. I actually purchased it from him when he bought it. Um, but there is a sticker on the coin for $24. So Jesse ended up buying this coin for $24 and uh, I think it gray sheets for $700 or $725 and then retails around $900 to $1000. So Jesse really made out on this coin. Um, when I get it in hand myself, 
Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit better uh, video of it on Friday. I look forward to seeing it. It almost says a shot FBL, which is kind of interesting. Or, I'm sorry, shot full bands, just full bands. But I'm um, very happy for Jesse. Uh, made a quick, uh, quick buck for sure. And uh, But let's show you guys some coins. We're very, very excited to show you a few new coins that we got in and a few old coins that we have in the shop as well. Uh, but let me show you, the, show you those. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please hit that like button. It really helps us out a lot. Reaches out to more people that have, you know, kind of a like-mindedness in the coin hobby. Uh, subscribe if you guys are new. Uh, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. It was a crazy milestone. And, uh, you know, comment down below. What do you guys think of the stories? What do you guys think of uh, the coins that you guys are going to see? Uh, just let us know. We'd be interested. Um, Let's get back to the video. Alrighty guys, I wanted to run you guys through a few coins that we have today. Uh, here are the new coins that we got in, and here are some older coins that we have in the shop. Um, and we also have this gold piece I want to talk to you guys about. But let's start off with this 1961 Washington Quarter. It's graded proof 67 by PCGS. The reason why I picked this coin up is because I thought it looked really nice. Um, and I kind of want to start offering more older slabs on the website just because there is a really high demand for those right now and people are starting to build sets. You know, I have guys reaching out to me that want to do Buffalo sets, SOQ sets, um, and they want to do, you know, anything that really just gets them busy and excited kind of about older holders. This one had a really nice cameo effect to it. I think there's a little bit of a touch uh, of something to the left of his mouth. But overall, I like the coin just because of, you know, back then they undergraded a lot of coins. And this is probably one of those exceptions. But just an interesting piece. I want to keep buying these when I can find them. Um, I'm, my main goal when going to shows is to buy every Rattler as long as it's for the right price. Um, here is an 1834. Cap bust half. Graded uh, AU50. The reason why I like this coin is because it looks nice and original. It may have had some old cleaning on it, but it really hasn't been dipped or messed with. When I flip over the coin, it still has some remaining luster, which I like a lot. And they're just, I don't know, they're just choice AU50 uh, barber, uh, I'm sorry, cap bust halves. And we actually picked up a few of these from Andrew. Thank you, Andrew, for uh, giving us the opportunity for these. Um, and when I say these, I meant this one. And it's uh, the extra half that he sent me as well. So these are actually consecutive cert numbers. This is 1833. That's an 1834. Now this 1833 cap bust half I think has been dipped. Um, and has a little bit of old cleaning. But still has some luster on it. Not my favorite of the bunch. But you never know what people might need for their collection. Uh, you could see a little bit of that haze on the reverse right above the eagle too. But you know. Just a nice nice pair of cat bus tafts. You can't go wrong with those, especially in the AU grade. A lot of people are looking for just a little bit more in terms of detail. And these kind of fit the mold for that. Uh, a lot of the cat busts that we offer and haven't really sold have been, you know, VF or, you know, XF maybe. But these ones at AU50 really are a nice touch. This is an 1881 uh, $5 gold lib. And the reason why I bought this coin is because I, I really like the Rattler holder, like we talk about a lot. And the grade's kind of interesting as well. It's graded MS60 by PCGS. And it's kind of hard to pick up on, but it has like a really nice subtle kind of toning around the rim. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty hard to, to tell it, but if you guys want to go on our website, AcousiaCollectibles.com, I'll try to include some better pictures of that. And like we've been talking about in previous videos... You know, we're trying to move into gold, and we want to do something that's kind of interesting, a little bit rare, and a little bit of character. And I thought this one had an interesting color. Sometimes you get gold that just doesn't have that rich gold-looking color, that rich yellow. You end up getting one that's a little bit more dark or white yellow, if that makes sense. And this one really is a rich yellow. And so, you know, stuff like this I'm very excited about. Uh, but let me show you guys a few more points here. Up next, I wanted to show you guys this 1938 D over S, graded MS65 by PCGS. The reason why I picked this one up, you already know the holder, but I do think this one has a shot at green, at green or gold cac. I think it's an easy green cac, but if it did gold cac, that would be pretty cool. 
My only concern on this coin is that spot right underneath the B, as you can see there. Might be a little bit hard to see, but uh, that spot really does not uh, fancy John's kind of liking. But I like the luster on the coin overall. Uh, on both sides of the coin, I do think that it could upgrade if I ever wanted to crack it out, which is really something I don't want to do. So we might send this to CAC when CAC opens up on April 1st, but enjoy the coin. Um, but if you guys do see it on our website, we probably didn't send it to CAC. Here is a 1935D Buffalo Nickel. And what I enjoy about this 1935D is that interesting toning that you see. You can see kind of a green and blue in front of uh, where it says Liberty. And it has some blue and reds right behind the head. I don't know. It's a cheap, affordable uh, piece of history with some interesting color. These are pretty hard to find toned, and we've been finding a lot lately just because we've been searching really hard for them. It's kind of been my passion as of recently. Uh, when you flip over the coin, still has some remaining toning right above the buffalo, but nothing to write home about. The strike is pretty nice for a 35D. Most of the time when I get them in, they're pretty bad. I do think this coin would be a nice coin to get cacked, but like I said, it's unfortunate that uh, they shut down for a month, but still a pretty coin. I like getting coins in like this. Uh, and let's talk about a few more coins here. This is an 1834 uh, dime graded fine 15 by NGC. Um, the reason why I picked this coin up is because it has a small four instead of a large four. Uh, small four is just a little bit harder of uh, you know of a variety to get on a, a cap cap bus dime like this. And I also bought it because it has a nice original look to it. Most of the time when you find these, you can find them like white looking or just like how people wanted to make them look like Morgan dollars, um, and that's kind of what you want to stray away from, especially um, you know with just older coins like this, nice original uh, bread and butter pieces. The other coin I want to show you guys next is this 1913 Buffalo Nickel, great MS65, and this is actually coming out of the personal collection. It has a kind of a weak strike or something's kind of weird with the toning on the obverse, as you can see. It just kind of makes it look like a weak strike, but still pretty nice coin. The reason why I bought this coin to begin with is because of the reverse. And you can tell that the, the strike is very strong, problem free, and the toning really does enhance the design of the coin. That's something that you have to look out for, especially when you're trying to buy nice buffaloes. I'm not trying to downplay the coin, but not my favorite of, my, of the collection, and I am going to get rid of it for uh, you know, a modest price if someone's interested in it. Uh, let's see. We talk, we're talk. we talking like a little bit about gold, a little bit older gold here, but Casey ended up buying uh, this ten, ten, or one tenth ounce uh, gold eagle. It was graded a little bit, I think it was graded in 2000, right when they came out. They sent a bulk, back, bulk batch into PCGS. And, you know, we wanted to offer something that was interesting in the shop, do a little bit more of a new age thing. We've been asked about ASCs and new Morgan dollars, and, um, and so when we picked this coin up, we wanted to keep it initially, but uh, things have changed with a little bit of what we've been collecting, so this one will be available as well. I thought it was just a nice example, no spots, no milk spots, uh, things that you normally would see on stuff like that. Here's a nice uh, original coin. This is an 1838 Large Stars Half Dime, um, and you know what the reason why we picked this one up. It's actually been on the shop for a little bit, but we're going to refresh it for you guys to take a look at. Uh, I bought it because it looked very original, and like I was talking about earlier with the other coin, most of the time you see them with old cleaning or problems. I think this one is just 100% original, nice, wholesome XF coin, and I can't complain with stuff like this when I run into it, and I hope someone is interested as much as I am in it. And last but not least, I want to show you guys this Franklin Half Dollar. We got it a few grapevines back. The reason why I wanted to pick a few of these coins out today is because I really did enjoy them. I do enjoy, you know, the original looking older U.S. coins. And I do enjoy coins that have nice luster and color, just like this Franklin Half. I do think they undergraded this coin a little bit. But the price bump in 66 is nothing crazy to write home about. Has some nice green and pink hues on the obverse. And uh, on the reverse, you can kind of see just the same overall uh, subject of, of nice luster and a little bit of modest color but thank you guys for taking a look at all these coins it's been a phenomenal pleasure to hang out with you guys today let's roll it to the outro 
Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please hit that like button. Uh, comment your thoughts down below. Do I have a cute dog or don't I have a cute dog? And uh, you know, let us know about uh, the coins that we showed off and the stories that we told. And subscribe if you're new. More videos to come and you'll enjoy them. I'll see you next time.